Man United are going to go in for him. The media just said Chelsea go for Delia. They kind of ignored the sentence from Italy that Man United were involved. But now the press is suggesting that Manchester United could forcefully enter the scene for Delit. Chelsea are in pole position, but Ten Hag is serious and an offer of 80 to 90 million euros could make the difference. What we're saying about, first and foremost, is the lit worth 80 million euros, which is what, about 65 million pounds? Yeah, no. I'm going to say, yeah, you know. I, I know I'm going to oh, go against the grain trick. and say, Come yes. On, trick. Did you see but, the guy, the euros? Did you see my euros? Yeah, but he's so <laughs> he young. He and we, we've, seen, we've seen what he can do in the Ajax team on their run to the Champions League semi finals. That was 3,000 years ago, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. See, see, was, see, I, see, I hate when guys do this stuff about, like, okay, so he's what this because, oh, look at what he could do. Look at what he could do because he's so young. Yes, if this was 2019, I'd be like, broom, yeah, because in 2019, guys are like, man. This could be the next great defender because this guy is 19. And look at how he's leading and I ask him at, at such a young age. Then we saw how he struggled at Juventus. Then we saw him pretty much cost his country a place in the quarterfinal with, 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 with him trying to play like, play like handball, volleyball in that game. So I'm sorry. They literally ain't that dude. Now, he's improved for UV and so forth. But the answer to your question, Terry, is the game's changed. Ever since that dude from Brazil called ne ne Neymar went for 222 million, the market has gone crazy. So you have a fridge that you guys bought for 80, 90 mil at, at, at United. And you just have guys who are 120, 130, 140. So we should stop focusing on like, oh my gosh, is he worth that? The numbers don't mean anything. If you want him, pay the money. Forget about what the price is. The price isn't related to how good they are. Money, boom. <laughs> Look at that. Look at no, that he's not. No, Terry, he's not. are you reliable? <laughs> who's, changed up, who's changed the settings on here to push the, f the framing up? That annoys me. KJ, you touched it. Yes, it. I touched it. Yeah, don't ever do that again. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know what it is? It's just one of those. We, I'm so anal about it. it. Moves up, and my brain goes, "What are you doing?" <laughs> it's so annoying. Uh, anyway, now listen. I, I am very reliable. Tap in tier one tell. They're calling me these days. So that, that's where we're at. Like, this is what it is. Look, I, I get your point about the lip, but we, he's still only 22 years old. He's younger than Kanate. He's younger than Jules Kunde. He's younger. <laughs> That kid, you know that kid that's about to join West Ham. Everyone's raving about Jesse Lingard, younger than him, <laughs> that younger kid than the other kid. Like he looks as cheap. Like I don't kind of get the the, the the sort of negativity, but you think he's good enough, Patrick? Yeah, uh, and I'm glad you said that, Terry. I wanted to expand on my point because Have Hope obviously jumped in and said <laughs> all of that stuff. But he's 22. He's young. He's gonna get better. Yes, he's had some shaky years. He's had some adversity. Yeah. But he's good enough to battle through that and continue. 22 as a centre-back is a baby. And he's gone through a lot. He's had a lot of experience. The guy's a good player, man. He's good on the ball. He's a good passer. He can read the game well. Yes, he's not the quickest, but you don't have to be if you can read the game well. And I think under a good manager and with a good base, if Man United actually get the structure right, then he can be in that team for the next, what, seven, six years? And they build around him. Real quick, sorry, Cage, just real quick, Patrick, don't come to Cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so let's say he's going to United. So, I'm, I'm, yeah. Patrick, I'm pretty sure you'll know, and even um, Jordan, you'll know as well. So, remind me again, was Ten Hag the manager in that um, yes. CL semi? Mm, yes. Was Delict also a, a defender as well? Yes. Did yes. the guy with the receding hairline score a hat trick in about 19 minutes to knock those guys out? Well, when Delix was on the... No, no, no. I didn't, I didn't uh, make a joke. Not, I don't know what you guys are laughing. It's not just Delix's fault, though. Nana, the keeper, should have done better on one of them. Also, I can't remember. Yeah, it's not just Delix. Come on, that's a bit harsh to follow all on them. Do what you want to say about that? He was only 19 at the time. I've seen a lot of football fans in the last however long Week, few weeks. Why does Ten Hag want to buy his ex players? I think you've even brought it up before. And I have thought about it like objectively. Well, you know, Pep hasn't really done it when he's moved. Klopp hasn't done it when he's moved. Like gone after a, a, a shed load of the players that he used to manage. But there is a big fundamental difference that I think staring us all in the face, but we haven't noticed it. He has unfinished business as a manager with these players. Ajax, every single summer, essentially, get pillaged. All their best players get taken away. So Ten Hag, he had a he had a year where you had the lit Frankie De Jong, Donny Van der Beek, and others, where he looked at them and probably thought, imagine he would have wanted to have kept them. He'd still want them now at Ajax, but he lost them all. So he wants. I feel like he wants those players back, so we can recreate and to restart what he, what he'd already begun, which was great building a really really good team, and he never got the best out of them. And he obviously feels that 
none of them have been utilized to the best of their potential since they've left Ajax and wants to bring them all back under one kind of banner and get the very best out of them. It's, it's a little bit like, you know, it's, it's a little bit like Take That. When Take That broke up and it all went solo, it didn't really work. <laughs> and then Take That got back together and they took over the UK music. This is the thing though, like, we need to look at why has the Lit not lived up to the hype? If you look at Juve since he joined and all they've gone through, you're telling me a 19-year-old defender at the time was going to come in and, be, flow, and it's going to flourish into the player that, that we all thought he could be in, in, in the space of two, three years. Of course he wasn't going to. Juve uh, Juve been in a weird spot for the last two seasons. Like, so to expect him to become this amazing player and he's worth the money that he's worth is, is a bit harsh considering the circumstances that he's in. I think also on Terry's point as well, Ten Hag is coming to this Man United team where everything's just been blown up. It's just been blown up. What, what do the players like want to play? How do they play normally? Do they even like each other? Everything is just in a mess right now. So to, for Ten Hag to actually be like, right, let me get players that I know, that I already know my system, that already know what I'm going to want from them, is a smart thing to do because it makes his job easier. Those players can then help everyone else come in and do and, and get used to the role. And then going on from January or maybe the next summer, you can start looking at players who are maybe not from the Ajax mold or used to Ten Hag to come in and, and compliment these guys in. No, now, no, I'm not saying I, that I won't do it at that price, but I get the thing, I understand the thinking of why it would be a good idea to bring him in. Can, can I just, I, I want to counter that point because. I understand all of this, bringing the band back together, and it's, it's a, it seemed like a good idea. But the problem with this is that I see is it shows a lack of a, a lack of an eye from from Ten Hag. It, it shows that he's not really going out there looking for player profiles to fit his system. He's just going to get those specific players that worked for him before at Ajax and trying to recreate that again at Man United. And when managers try to recreate, it often goes wrong, especially with the same players. Why what, he, he should be looking at other players that can come into Man United and take Man United to the next level, in which both of these players may be able to, mm. but they're both players that are young and will have to come to the Premier League to adapt. And yes, they will know his system, but they don't know the Premier League. They don't yeah, know the fair. pace of football and they need to come in to yeah, Man United, which know. is one of the biggest clubs in world football. So it's going to be a massive culture change, which they've already done and they both struggled with their original culture change. I get change. that. So if we get over to England, yeah. I think it's going to be it's going to be a trouble for them. I, I do get it. Uh, Souls, have you got a fan or something going in your room? No. Is like yeah, yeah, I'm hearing like a little sound like an sound engine in the or something going on in your room. Right, sure let me just... Yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just, I don't know what that noise is. You sort that out for us. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Cage, okay, you're going to respond to George. Um, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> no, no, but you're talking about re recreating and the yeah. whole yeah. thing and bringing the band back. Yeah. And like, does that make sense to pretty much? Yeah, oh, but, yeah, but you, you say, yeah, uh, yeah, I say, I say, but you say it's a, a lack of vibe, but there's a report that came out saying Man United actually looked at alternatives to Frankie de Jong and they were like, they're just not good enough. So instead of going for these lesser players, he's like, no, I've got a plan. I've got an idea. I'm going to stick to it. And for him to not go after his main target just because whatever would be, I, I think, more of a lack of an eye from Ted Hag than he is to just go after some random guy. Honestly. No, 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 no but, but here's the thing. Though, okay. <laughs> it's, it's, this is a weird one because I think the how United are going about it is sort of the right switch is that, okay, get the manager give him what he wants, support him as much as he can so he can build a team in his image, which makes sense. But if you have a situation where Frank de Jong is like, I don't want to leave Barcelona, I still want to stay here, you have to just say, okay, look, Frank de Jong isn't the best midfield in the world. Frank de Jong is not the most unique midfield in the world. If you have good scouts who are paid a lot of money, you can find guys who are mm -hmm. similar to a Frank de Jong. Frank de Jong is not a guy where, oh my gosh, there's no one like him. He's the most unique guy. If it does have... That may be, that may be the case, I hope, but guess what? Good thing Frankie Young wants to leave Barcelona. You know what I mean? Because if he didn't, we would not be this far down the line of him coming to Manchester United. This isn't a Di Maria. This isn't. Oh no! But a if Barcelona says that we don't want yeah. you anymore, yeah. what does Frankie do? If that's no, we have plans yeah, with so Pedri, on, Gavi, Beyond. But, but, but that same logic, you want Usman Dembele, don't you? The Us, yeah. Yeah, you want him, but he wants to stay at Barca. To shush. No, 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 Terry, I've got a response. I've got a response. No, no, there is, there is no, there is no response. There is no response. He want his first choice 
was to stay at Barca. We're not twerking for the Ooster. Hang on. But, no, but the, what do you mean you're no. not twerking? You are t- you're doing the same thing Man United are. <laughs> Barcelona are basically said to them, you can stay if you, if you take a pay cut. And if you actually read the reports from Barcelona as well, they're happy for De Jong to stay, but they've said that they want to do a contract renewal and lower his wages. They are treating De Jong in the same way that they're treating... Usman Dembele. They have hemorrhaged. They've overpaid players for years. And that's what partly led to their financial situation. So De Jong and Dembele are in the same position. But as I tweeted yesterday, Chelsea seem to get this, cl- and rightfully so, because it isn't desperate, but they're left alone to chase a player that doesn't 100% want to be at Chelsea. He'd rather stay at Barca. And no one cares. Man United do it. And it's like, oh, you, you look like a pathetic, desperate club. Sorry, the I way that United it. have been chasing De Jong is the same way that Chelsea have been chasing Usman De- Chelsea have numerous targets. With United and De Jong, it seems as if if we don't get De Jong, we can't even exist or move. United are going all in, every man, woman, and child for, for, for De Jong. That's not what Chelsea is doing for, for De Jong. Yeah, but, but, Look at the whole Kunde thing. It's not happening. Kunde prefers Barca. Chelsea are now moving on to another target. But United are just obsessed with this one target. But we can get out. That's but great. We, but we can get out. This is the difference. You, you, you're now, you've, you've given a completely opposite example. But I'm basically, I don't think Jules Kunde has picked Barca over you. I think you've changed your direction. However, we'll go with your logic. Jules Kunde has picked another club. He doesn't want Chelsea in your mind. Frankie de Jong has agreed terms with Manchester United. That's done. This is three week old news. He's happy to join. We haven't been twerking. This deal has been held up by Barca trying to extrapolate more money out of Man United. We haven't spent five weeks lifting our skirt up to Frankie. That's done. <laughs> Weeks ago, that was done, bro. Like, people, what people are trying to do, the Man United fans, is this is what was said when we were first linked to Frankie Jong. It's what's been said today when we've been linked to, to uh, the lit. These are the give, give or take, these are the words Frankie won't downgrade. Now that Frankie's happy to join Man United, you've got to find another way to spin it and make it sound negative. That's all this is, in my but, opinion. But here's How my, to make Man United transfers look bad. Here's my thing about this whole desperation, looking at all of this. Listen, Man United for years have been mocked and laughed at because they had an idea of what they wanted, ended up not wanting to pay the money for it and therefore get a different player who we overpaid for and then flipping, um, we just, it's just not our first choice, i.e. Fred. Fred is a big example of that. We didn't want, like, Mourinho didn't want Fred. He wasn't on the high end list, but because of X, Y, and Z reasons, we, we changed direction and we got ended up getting him. We've done that for years. So we're getting laughed at. We used to get laughed at for doing that. Man United, for the first time in a while, have, have a plan that they stick to, that they want. No, this is the target we want. We are going to get him. And now we're getting laughed at for doing that and abandoning our plans. No, 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 look, to, Hedges, look, see. To get, to get this guy. No. Listen, and this is, uh, uh, have it, you may not be implying this, mm. but this is what is being implied by rivals, and not just by rivals, by other Man United fans who can't wait and can't have the patience just to let something new that started two months ago actually work. We've it's got good, an it's... idea of what we want. And for once, we actually were doing everything we can to go get it. I don't see why that's a negative in my opinion. No, 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 I don't think it's missing because I start off by saying, look, how United are going by doing this makes a lot more sense. You bring in a manager, you support the manager. If you're bringing in Ten Hag, you have to go all in for Ten Hag. So if he says, no, this piece is important for what I want to try and do, you help to support him. But at the same time, it just seems as if because the reality is, I'm not sure Frank de Jong is jumping to come to Man United. And it just seems as if like... <laughs> You are going all in for a guy who, because here's the thing, though, and that's why I ever want to ask, maybe you, Terry, and so forth. Is it Frankie and two other midfielders as well? It can't just be Frankie with McSauce and Fred Flintstone no, no, in that no, midfield. Again, re, again, I'm not saying you don't obviously follow United News. It's They're looking at two midfielders, Frankie being one of them, and then moving on to somebody else. But this is what you, people have got to weigh up. There is a good budget at Man United, but it isn't a bottomless pit. Knowing whether we're getting Frankie and how much we're paying for him dictates who else we go for i.e if ericsson says yes and it's a free transfer money i then think extra money will be put towards the anthony deal but if ericsson says no for whatever reason now suddenly we need to put money aside for a new midfield player so everyone panicking that all the deals aren't done yet it's because you've got to wait for things to fall into place because you need to know how much money you've got. And you don't know how much money you've got until you've actually signed particular players or decisions are sort of made in relation to that. We've got some super chats.